Hey everyone, Joel from Life in Nika here. Thanks for checking out this video. And this one covers Nicaragua's 2024 real estate market and trends. Um, if you're watching this outside of the website, you can check out the companion article over at lifeinnika.com slash blog. And that one's got a bunch of links for a bunch of the things we'll be mentioning. And then as well, everything else on the blog always is over there. So in this video, I'm mainly spoke, focusing on the Southern Pacific region. So like San Juan del Sur and Popoyo given that those are most popular for foreigners investing in the country. And quick overall is that the market here is growing and it's at or near historically high levels of like total transactions numbers. We're also seeing strong numbers in terms of nominal sales values. And these those seem to be slowly and steadily increasing, which is a continual trend that we've been seeing for the last like the decade and a half with some variable fluctuations year by year, um, including commercial and new builds. Um, but as I mentioned, I'll go over later, usually it's less expensive to buy an existing property than commission one from new. Um, that's mainly due just to materials inflation, costs since the pandemic. Uh, most of the stuff here is built out of concrete and rebar, and that loose monetary policy of all the countries have increased the prices of those base materials. So and in contrast, sellers of existing places, homes and businesses are more likely to take the nominal dollar, nominal dollar amount that they, that they got into it. So, all other things being equal, usually we're, the existing sales are probably a better bet than the than building something from new. Um, and so we're seeing these increased numbers and that's correlated with increases in tourism. Um, you know, the fact that sales levels are back and above like historic highs is not surprising. A large proportion of the economy here, the economic activity comes from the tourism sector and that's at record levels as well. So as we're seeing all these things sort of go together, you know, increased sales, new build starts, tourism levels going up and that correlation that all kind of makes sense in terms of how the market works and um, and what we're seeing so like many popular holiday destinations a lot of the time the path to real estate comes with vacations so people come down they'll come on vacation and then end up liking it and buying it and last year 2023 we Nicaragua had 1.2 million visitors for the calendar year in the country's population about 7 million that's pretty good and this increase in visitor numbers also contributed to a 24% rise in tourism revenue year over year. And their projections from the World Travel and Tourism Council, and basically they're thinking that the growth again should be even higher here throughout the rest of 2024. Um, so and in addition to those, like, um, those total number of tourists, the average spend per tourist is going up as well. Um, and that comes from an increasing number of wealthier tourists that are visiting. So this influx of affluent visitors translates into heightened interest in those more premium properties as well. So that's definitely increased the demand segment, um, high quality homes in well-designed, well-managed communities. And then it creates a virtuous cycle. Like the more people come down, like those homes, buy those communities, they build more, and then there are more, there are more of them, like-minded people looking at the same thing. And then that also tends to bring up the level of services in town. Like as you get more people with you know, higher, higher discretionary income, there are more businesses that will pop up to serve them. And that self-reinforcing cycle seems to be going well. We've got more nicer houses, um, more nicer business opening in town to serve the people that have bought these houses. So uh, another big one is the infrastructure. And obviously, well, if you don't know, the big one here is the coastal highway going on right now. So it's an over, I think it's $415 million is what they're currently looking at. And it's been currently being built rapidly between the Costa Rican border and north of Popoyo. So that's going all the way around, like from the San Juan area up to Popoyo and then farther north and south of town as well. And it's gonna enhance the connectivity and the accessibility for the entire region. And they're really progressing quickly. Like the area north of Popoyo is already built. And I do think that's gonna increase the, the overall market for the area in terms of everything, the whole economy. Obviously tourism, you know, anytime you get major infrastructure that makes it easier to get from place to place, those are great things. And it's gonna help with economic development overall. Um, for San Juan del Sur and Popoyo, I think it's gonna help our area because it's going to, you know, for the, all the people that like the town's amenities, the school, the community, the highway will increase the accessibility to the really good surfing up in Popoyo. And then from Popoyo, it's gonna really shorten up those travel durations to Managua, the airport, to San Juan, to Costa Rica, and that Costa Esmeralda airport um, for private flights. So it's still closed at the time that I'm doing this video, but it will reopen as demand picks back up. And so that, that regional airport combined with the, the improved highway access, I think is gonna be really good for this entire coast. 
Um, and that should continue to increase that income per capita and per tourist that, are, that we're seeing. So how much spend and then how much, how much each tourist spends and how much, how much time they're spending in the market and how long they're coming for. Um, and all these things together, so you've got the, the, government spend, the government investment, the private investment, and those are all sort of helping things in terms of working together. But there are also some global economic trends, and, and at the time of writing, at the time of doing this video, um, borrowing rates are still really high, and they're above central bank targets. And given that the majority of homeowners in Nicaragua are from Canada and the United States, and some from the rest of the world, those economic policies and those rates there are gonna have effects down here. Um, the average 30-year mortgage in the U.S. is still around 7% at the time of writing, and Canada's prime rate is essentially the same. So that's just altered demand at different pricing levels and for different potential buyers as a result of how that economics works for them in terms of if they're going to borrow a loan. Now, a lot of American homeowners have what like, you know, are called golden handcuffs. Um, if they got a 30-year rate that's really low, they're not going to move and they're not going to get a HELOC loan against, they're not going to get a loan against the equity. And you can, even see, you can even see that in the States where like 34% of transactions are all cash. And given that our market is currently, is, is basically a cash market, there's a lot of overlap in terms of the buyer profile between those two, those two segments. Um, you know, back only a couple of years ago, rates got as low as into the you know, mid 2% range. And at that time, we're seeing a lot more people borrow to buy here, but obviously that's not the case. Nobody's gonna borrow now at those rates and buy here. So, and we were seeing, what I thought we might see was a little slowdown here, but now that rates have stabilized and maybe like at least held on, the, the sales volume picked back up here, and it seems like the market here is doing pretty well, and I think that's just due to sentiment, because people, when rates are rising, people are uncertain, but now that it seems to have stabilized, I think that's had an effect on why we're seeing the sales number come, the sales numbers be back up to historically high levels here again. Um, I do think there's some opportunities there, like there's some mid-range properties in sort of the two hundred to $400,000 range that I think wouldn't have been available for as long, or maybe not at these prices during with the low rates of COVID, but now, um, with people not borrowing against properties back home to buy, I do think there are some like some really good value propositions out there, especially when you compare here to 30 miles south in Costa Rica. So as for likely future trends, I do think that this region of southern Nicaragua is poised for like that continued steady growth, that continued steady growth in tourism. Being a cash market, we don't get the really big ups, we don't get the really big downs, it just tends to be a slow and steady increase in the market. But the coastal highway and those new infrastructure investments could change that a little bit. If those go really well, I could see I could see things a little bit more of a boom here, but like conservatively estimating them, the market just slowly, steadily goes up here. And I do think that that increased number of affluent tourists, the increased number of tourists visiting the country, does, and then buying more of the high-end homes does create that virtuous cycle where more people like them, they, you know, their their socioeconomic, socioeconomic cohort, you know, oh, it's a great place, they buy, their friends buy, and there are new businesses in town that are nicer, more nicer places, and that gradual and steady growth trajectory should allow the, the area to retain its unique charm and the character um, without becoming like overly touristed, you know, as opposed to some similar areas down on Costa Rica's um, Guanacaste Peninsula. So. I do think the road here is, is longer, like we're not gonna get some insane bloom all of a sudden, but I do think it's going to be, I think it's gonna be good. I think that slow steady growth, the infrastructure combined with the uh, um, a more affluent group of people coming to visit, coming to stay, coming to live and buy, um, does bode really well for the future. So if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for checking out the video and uh, have yourself a great day.